good. Uh, started today is April 21st, Wednesday, uh, this is the Kubernetes Data Protection Working Group meeting. Today we have a couple of topics to go through. Uh, the first one is that I recently found an uh, interesting discussion on Reddit. I think some of this, uh, some of the members within this group were on that Reddit thread as well. Uh, basically, TLDR is backup solutions or simple backup solutions in Kubernetes context to pro provide data protection. It's one of the top wanted items. Uh, that's one message. The other message is that existing tools like uh, in Kubernetes uh, seems to be complex uh, from many users' perspective, and uh, they are looking for simple solutions, uh, which I personally don't fully agree because doing backup is probably easy, but doing restoration is harder. So uh, if you guys are interested, please, uh, you can take a look at the discussion on Reddit. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, lot of uh, threads discussing, discussing different methods of backing up your Kubernetes volume uh, over there. It, it, I, I personally find it interesting and uh, looking at those ones makes us clear that the uh, what the what this working group is talking about seems to be on the right track to providing to provide fundamental building blocks uh, so that they can do that. A backup, William backup being one William popular change block tracking. All this uh, really really interesting ones that can potentially solve the problems discussed in this thread. Take a look, please. Uh, the second agenda we will go through will be the data protection white hey, paper. Hey, Sean, can I ask really quick, um, is, is the feeling that snapshots are what people want and that the existing snapshot design meets everyone's requirements? Uh, you ask a great question. So William snapshot is actually a lot of people are asking for. What they are asking a little more it's on top of volume snapshot, some kind of orchestration such that they can do simple scheduling. Oh, okay. So, but, so people aren't even satisfied with the status quo for snapshots necessarily. Yeah, basically what they were, the initial idea, the, the person who raised this question, uh, I don't know who, he, uh, who they are. Uh, basically what his requirement is, a simple like cron interface that can literally schedule snapshots over the volume uh, in a in a regular man manner and that's one the other one is uh, a simple mechanism to schedule backups volume backups uh, on a regular manner as well basically what they want to achieve is relatively low RTO using uh, snapshot to restore the volumes and the relatively longer but more durable William backup solution for uh, using the William backup. Uh, they didn't talk too much about orchestration over the workload. One of the interesting idea was utilizing GitOps for uh, Kubernetes resource backup and uh, this lightweighted William feature for William backup and snapshots. But I, I, I don't, I, I think this problem is oversimplified in that thread, but it's it definitely worth reading and maybe you have some comments you can you can leave over there as well. Sure, okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's really cool actually, yeah. It does seem to be dominated by um, one or two very noisy people who have very strong opinions, so. Uh, right, right, that's the reason why I think we need our voice over there, right? I mean, I personally feel some of the problem has been greatly simplified in their cases. Uh, theoretically, you can make it work for backup using GitOps plus William snapshot on William backup. But during the restoration, I, I couldn't think of a simple way you can do uh, a restoration without complexities 
lies in tools like Verora and Keston to do the coordination. So yeah, they paid a lot of attention to the backup piece, let me put it this way. <laughs> Definitely. Are, are you asking for help putting together a response? Do we want to kind of um, put a response? No, no, I'm not. Or? Yeah, I'm not asking for help, but just there the are two things I get out of this thread, right? One thread, one thing is that backup is a thing that people want, right? To for data protection, which means what we are doing over here is valuable, right? The other thing is that people seems to be make this problem oversimplified, as I said. And uh, that makes me feel stronger about a white paper, right? As soon as we publish a white paper and explain why it's so hard to do data protection and the restoration in a Kubernetes context, I think people would get a more clear idea. Does yeah, it make sense? I, I agree with both of those points that uh, th th everyone has a different opinion for how backup and restore should work. And f fortunately, you know, you can make as much noise on Reddit as you want, but if you don't write any code, like nothing is going to change. So, um, you know, people who are going to write the code have to have to define the problem correctly. And, and that's, I think, uh, where the white paper will help. That's, that's, that's exactly what I meant. Right? If you're interested, right, and if you have your own opinion, you know, feel free, right? I'm not going to just say, go ahead and do that, but uh, it, it's, your, it's your choice. Anyway. Uh, the white paper updates, uh, we will go through a couple of items. Tom, I think you got the Quiet Hooks uh, phone has finished the change block tracking and uh, missing building blocks diagram is updated, I guess. Uh, the third item is very small. Uh, Shane's working on phase two of WM snapshot GA, basically swapping the storage version from V1 beta 1 to V1. I'll give her, I'll, I'll let her to explain. And then we can open for issues. And now let's get started on the uh, white paper thing. Uh, okay. Tom, you want to get started on that? Uh, I can give you, you want me to show the screen or you can do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not too much worth showing. Um, I think we, I think the post motivation section is unchanged, but it's probably okay to stick in. Um, Tom, I, I, I see that you added another doc, but I, does, I don't think we have permission to read that doc. Oh, let me have permission. Um, so I can do link, yeah. I do. I've been formatting the app appendix section, um, trying to make it a little more consistent. And I think there's probably more content we want to add there to make it uh, more balanced, I think. Um, so I'm I'm chipping away at that. Let me modify the permission settings there. OK, why, why don't I do this? Oh, I'll, I'll make you a, a presenter. Uh, sure. Oh, actually, I can't. Uh, okay, only maybe I have to. Yeah, maybe I yeah. have to do that. But let me try. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I think I have impressions. Um, let me share my screen too. Yeah, so basically what I'm doing here is just formatting uh, that the appendix section. I think having a consistent format that we can kind of um, flush out a little bit more. Basically, I just copied over all, all the data from here. Uh, from the bottom of this, right? We have this kind of big unformatted section from here. Um, so that's that. And then for this one, um, is there any feedback? We just want to stick this into the, the document. Um, you know, it's a little bit, it doesn't make sense to just add in the quiesce section in the main document. Are people happy with that? Do we want to do something else? Yeah, we, can, we can part of have uh, people review that, give comments, right? We can we can add it there and that's fine. Either way, I mean, we can have people just go ahead and review the separate doc. Maybe that's easier. It's the, the, the whole doc is a little long. So maybe just to have, if, uh, so now everyone has permission to add comment to that doc, right? For this one? Right. Yeah, the, yeah. the separate doc, maybe I think it's probably easier. The both, uh, the you have this one and then you have the, the appendix. If both are ready for review, maybe just to, you know, give everyone permission to comment and then this way. Let's see. Um, yeah. Let's make this up. And just, Anyone, yeah. 
Yes, those ones. Are, comments, then, yeah. You can change. You can change and make it. Now you can. You only give a uh, read ability, not comment. Right. Do share and that link over there. Change. I think this one is anyone can comment on this. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's fine, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's it. Um, not much here. I did want to ask too. Um, do we do we do we're doing anything for KubeCon coming up? You know, I know like we're we at Caston are working on a bunch of things. Um, I was curious if people were wanted to coordinate on anything. Um, you know, I can give a, a brief overview of what we're looking at. Uh, uh, so it's a virtual, right? So um, how do you want to coordinate? Yeah, we can. There, there are some. So uh, Sushan so Chandra has a has a session. It's in session about our data protection wing group is an update. Uh, so what do you have in mind for, uh, since this is virtual, I'm not sure how, <laughs> but, but how to coordinate on Slack or? Um, well, so we're, we're doing, uh, I'm, I'm giving a short talk on ransomware, which might be interesting if people are curious about anything, I can, I can give an update on that. And okay. then we're also, Casim is doing a, a cloud native data management day, uh, which yeah, is yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, one in ten. I think Shing, you, you kind of know about this already, right? I would, yeah, I would, yeah. Uh, this, I will, I'll give a talk presenting uh, six story. So actually, six story has two talks there. Uh, one is uh, just about CSI, and the, the other one is about cozy. Yeah, great. Uh, not not specific to, to the protection. We can just put all the things in the uh, doc. Oh yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, let's just right. have a have a section on the top. Uh, we just uh, put all the like all the talks sessions we think people are interested we can just put them there yeah we can we can put and it then there. we can chatting we we have our slack channel we have our own slack channel if people want to uh, discuss over there then we can do that as well uh, any other ideas i i think the uh in in the past the uh the cloud native team is going to create individual uh, Snapchat threads for each talk. Uh, if you want, you can update the talk along with your link as well as with the Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat, sorry, the Snapchat? Uh, really? not Snapchat. Sorry, uh, the uh, Slack, Slack Slack channel. It's not yeah. for each talk, right? I think it's it's there is like one uh, there's one channel for speakers and the people who attend right. session can communicate it's for, for all it's not like for sure but each talk has yeah. a threat uh, i don't think it's for each talk it's just one it's just a one common slack channel otherwise there'll be so many talks how can they it's a it's a threat not not a channel it's a threat each yeah. threat yes uh, anyway uh we, okay. we can do this kind of thing uh, okay, uh, Tom, is that all you have at this moment? So, okay. yeah, so in the past, there were, well, well it's face to face, right? They have this like um, meetup section uh, at, at the end, right? So, uh, virtual, they may have something, so we'll see. I haven't seen any information on that. Um, yeah, Not but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different. It's a, <laughs> it's a, yeah. Virtual. Uh, can we move this thing to uh, this the discussion to the uh, open issue ones? Uh, I think yeah, Juan, sure, sure. Yeah, Juan is waiting for the uh, change block checking. Yeah. Juan, you have you are already a co-host, so feel free to share your screen, please. Uh, are you talking? We cannot hear you. If you are. Oh, can you hear me? Now? Yeah. Good. Let me try to share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see the screen now? Yep. Okay, so uh, this is the white paper segment related to different show snapshot that uh, we have um, discussed and, and we have write up. Uh, I got feedback so far from Jing and from Ed, and uh, these are uh, this is very short segment. Uh, this uh, first they talk about the motivation and the requirement that we come up with and the uh, sample workflow for the backup 
uh, that uh, we use the different source snapshot service to help with the backup to make it more efficient. So you can see the motivation is very much that uh, instead of backing up the entire volumes every single time, uh, if we use a different source snapshot that tells the difference, the, the changes that happen between the current situation, the current um, status and the previous backup, then we only need to back up the change. So that is the motivation behind this one. And we also talk about the difference between uh, the different source snapshot and the incremental snapshot here. In that incremental snapshot is a, just a special case of different source snapshot. Uh, we prefer the different source snapshot because uh, that will help uh, the backup vendor like my, like my own company to create more flexible uh, backup policy. It can be uh, backup um, in, instead of just backup uh, compared to the previous one, we might be able to uh, compare with the one that last month for, for example. Uh, this will give uh, the, um, practically, I think most of the time it will be like incremental backup, but uh, this different source snapshot capability would give the uh, backup vendor more flexibility. And the requirement that we spell out here is that uh, we, we spell it all out here. And I can talk briefly about some of them, but you can you can beat it. But let, <coughs> basically, we want uh, the snapshot to be between um, any any two snapshot, and we want to support uh, both the block and the file system. Uh, so instead of just uh, so, we also talking about uh, the 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 um, the detail level that we should able to provide. Uh, so that the backup vendor can base on this detail level to do uh, appropriate backup, uh, so that they don't have to uh, backup the entire um, volume and so on and so forth. And then for the um, backup workflow, this is just an example uh, of how the different so snapshot uh, can be used. Uh, it, so each vendor may have a different way to uh, do this, but this is just a one example. Uh, and this is uh, the workflow is basically first the, um, the, the, the controller, the backup controller would uh, create a snapshot, the volume snapshot of, of PVC. And then if the previous snapshot is available, if the, the, the controller has this information somehow, if that available, then it will call the different source snapshot service with these two snapshot information then the uh, different so snapshot service will send us, send, send the controller back the list of chain. This list of chain, the content of this list of chain is depend on uh, either whether this is a block device or is it a file system device. And the, uh, the detail would be provided by uh, this different so snapshot would enable the next step, which is the controller, the backup controller at that point will only back up the chain, whether it is a block that chain or is a file that chain or new directory and so on, so it depend on the detail. So that is the the uh, the, the typical workflow. And after that, uh, you know, you can do continue with other uh, backup of the uh, user uh, namespace or application or whatever that is. So uh, that is how uh, the backup workflow use a different source snapshot to improve the effectiveness uh, of the uh, backup service. That's oh, Fun. Yes. I, I thought the CPT will apply to both block and the file. No, uh, the CPT, the name mean in block tracking. And we intend to make another thing called chain files list or chain. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see my, 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 I, sorry, I, I was, uh, I was not aware of this change. I probably didn't. No, no, the, 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 service, the service that we, we propose here should able to do both. But maybe when we do implement, we might start with the CBT first. Then we, right, but, yeah, but we, change uh, file list, it's, uh, it's not as useful, right? Because you, know, you, you can simply just touch a file, which is five gigabytes. <laughs> And well, change it, the time step. That would involved. depend how you how you design the change file list API. Sure, you could get change file ranges and and try to make it smarter. 
I, although I, I was wondering, is there some confusion because the, my memory of this feature is it can be used to back up file system volumes by relying on the ability to convert back and forth between file system and raw block volumes in Kubernetes. Yeah, that is if the the back end under, underlying, uh, if it, it, it is a block, it, it is the you can support it. both. Yes, yes, that part is right. But, but I think um, this one was talking about pure like file volumes is just files, you know, there are. Yeah, yeah, that, that's something we should do mm -hmm. too. But, yeah, but, it, yeah. but it's, it reminded talk... me of the, mm -hmm. of the problem that we had with uh, with uh, in Kubernetes tracking whether a snapshot was of a volume or was of a raw block or a file system volume. Did, did we ever make any progress on updating the snapshot API to remember what it was? We didn't get any chance to work on that, Ben. Yeah. No, we haven't. <laughs> but, but but that was that was one of those issues that we discovered is is that. Yeah, yeah. That that's something that we will be looking into in one dot twenty two. Yeah, in okay. uh, uh, we not right. the, uh, the cap for this uh, this different so snapshot later. Uh, right now, we just talk about uh, the white paper part, which is just give a general um, idea okay. general workflow. Yeah. Sorry to distract then. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, so think that one. It's just because it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not straightforward. So that's why <laughs> progress is slow. So we will get back to that. Um, so I think yeah. So the white paper. I, I know that we talked about it when we talked about the CBT design. We we said that we will look at the block. Just change block first. We don't look at the change file to start with because it's they are very different. Um, yeah. But I think in the white paper, yeah, we should talk about both. So. Uh, I don't know, but maybe maybe uh, maybe uh, banking can get some insights from NetApp side. But change files, yeah, it it is it is certainly doable. It just I, I don't quite understand the scope over there. Uh, does it cover file metadata as well? Uh, I'm pretty sure that there there was an implementation of an API like this in by NetApp years ago, I think it still works. So I'm just saying it's, it was designed a long time ago. I believe when we did it, it was at just the file granularity. So if you touched a 10 gig file, it would report that the file was changed, even if you only altered one byte. Um, so yeah, th that, those kinds of stuff are weaknesses, but it's, it's better than nothing. So I, I, don't know sure. if, I don't know if we'd want to propose an API that sort of has those kinds of trade-offs or limitations. I think eventually we, we should, right? But I, I thought we were talking about it. we will start with block and then we'll go there because the, even for block, we still have a lot of unresolved issues and the file is uh, more complicated. And it seems to me the backup vendors will start with the block first. Well, it's my, that's, you know, that's to my knowledge. I could be wrong. Well, that, 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 that's for the, for volumes that either are raw block or can be converted to raw block. If you want yeah. to back up a file system volume that can't be converted to raw block, you, you have no choice but to deal with the file system. <laughs> right. I just haven't uh, heard many people are doing the doing this change file listing, but I'm saying I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I think um, on the data protection vendor side is, is to do, you know, kind of the opposite of what Ben just described, where mm -hmm. you actually track the modification time and then avoid doing full file updates if, if needed. Um, you know, we, for example, do a sampling thing that will will still do a hash of some percentage of the files, but, you know, we, we think it's okay to maybe reread the, the metadata of each file uh, if you're looking mm -hmm. at the files backup. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, like, reading the contents of the file, you can implement a, a space efficient or transfer efficient backup, but you end up reading a lot of data that you might not have to if you had had, like, a change file tracking API that had really good information. Uh, what what are the, the the heuristic way of doing things? It seems to be okay, right? Because because what they do is they they first traverse the file system to find out any file changes and then do a block comparison. Yeah. And only shift the block block differences out to the backup repository. I was wondering whether this is something we can consider. But anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Rest, Restic relies on having some additional state that it remembers about the last time it backed up the file system so that sure. it can sure. skip over stuff that hasn't changed. Sure, we have the previous snapshot, right? Shouldn't that preserve the similar mechanism or similar states? 
yeah, I think it, it, it does make sense to do that. We, we do a, a trade off to, cause you can always modify M time, you know, which is a little bit dangerous. I can, um, but you know, we, we do a trade off where we, we both uh, rely on M time, but then do a sample to, to make sure that, you know, no, nothing tricky is going on under the coverage too. So yes, what's the suggestion for, for this uh, uh, white paper? This is short doc by Fawn. Uh, should he add more information on how did you change yeah, the file? I, I would say maybe just leave the change file to the future. Because I, I, I don't think we have a finalized solution over here. How do we define I, and the And also we files? don't, yeah, I, also we don't have to come up with a solution in this, right? In the, the white people, we just want to identify problems. What sure, problem sure. we want to solve? So maybe you Sure, can that's my point, right? Is this, the right? is this the right approach to solve this problem for file systems? That was my point, right? But anyway, I, I you know, it's minor. Oh, you're saying honest. like change file list, is that the right solution? For file systems, yes. It, it could only be additive. Like if you already have a, a restic like scheme where you have remembered the state of the last snapshot and you know your only vulnerabilities are to people goofing around with M times, then having a, a change file list could let you detect when someone had goofed around with an M time more cheaply. Um, so it's, it's better than not having it, but it's not necessary. So we just say this is like one uh, optional thing people can do. Um, but do we need to add other things to this to this doc other than you know the change block tracking, change file list? Do we also want to describe other other ways that the uh, yeah you know um, the requirements over there makes me wondering whether this this will be a first class supported thing, right? Like mm -hmm. the last item for file system volume, the service should handle shared volumes, right? That means that this is going to be a feature of the service itself, right? So yeah, the maybe, we, we, maybe we don't call this requirements. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe we should, uh, I'm not sure what, what, do you, what do you say here because we're not really, this is not a design doc. We're not writing a design doc. So why sure. do you write requirements? So, um, so is, call like, maybe what is the problem we want you, what are the problem we want to solve or you may want to explain that? Um, and we identify change block tracking is something that we need to solve our problem. But change file is, is something maybe we need, but we're not sure. So maybe it's like optional. And then are there other things we think we might need? Still optional, maybe we can also. <laughs> I think we need change file. It's just that we don't know what's possible. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, According to Ben, the RESTIC way, which RESTIC keeps track of in all the change files, there is the RSync way where you actually you don't maintain any state, but you just compare the diffs and you do checksums, and then you send the mm -hmm. change blocks there. And there is the NetApp way, which is the I can share actually. The, if, if you don't mind, I can share a little bit about how NetApp does it. Yeah, um, yeah. Can go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. So should we actually, yeah, so that maybe I'm thinking that maybe that then should we just, uh, here we explain a few ways of doing things, like, you know, just, uh, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think we can generally talk about, yeah, talk then, about uh, changing, uh, tracking mm -hmm. um, changes for files, but how it's done, I guess that, dip, um, so I, mm -hmm. it says host disable participant screen sharing. Can someone enable that? Oh, you, are you trying to share something? Yeah, I'm trying to share oh, my screen. Let me, okay, then I need to make you a co-host. Okay, nice. So, I mean, this is public, so you can just Google this. Snap diff, okay. this is basically the API where you can diff two snapshots, two NetApp snapshots. But this is not, this is not change box. You're saying this, this is not, this is, this is change files. Oh, change file, word. oh, okay. Right. And um, basically, on tap, the NetApp operating system has the two billion blocks. One is snap diff. This is basically what we were talking about. Well, okay, so this okay, so a, a this difference in engine that generates a list of change files between yeah. two snapshot copies. Okay. 
And this is a stab error cloud. This is just a way basically to back up all the change blocks to a remote endpoint, for example, an object store. Okay. And basically, but you know, <laughs> this is smart. So if one block of a file changed, you only send that change uh, block. Okay. You don't send the full okay. file. And also, you know, we do dedupe compression. Mm -hmm. So all those efficiencies are preserved as you back up. Mm -hmm. And you can recover individual files and so forth. I believe these APIs are not public. So I think these are only available to backup vendors. And, um, but I imagine like, I mean, some are listed here. So I imagine like these vendors, yeah. they can take advantage of these snap APIs. Okay. But I don't think these are public. So okay. anyone, I don't think anyone can write a solution that would take advantage of these files. So, okay. Um, yeah, so maybe we can, like, at a high level, just to explain the different solutions. Um, yeah. I guess, what do you want to put in the white paper and what do you want to follow up with as design proposals or, you know, other follow ups later? I think we would want to emphasize that change file tracking is an optimization that is, is nice to have but not presented as something that's absolutely required. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, like basically we can do change track, fall tracking at multiple levels, you know, like R-Sync is one way to do it. You know, it's like a very efficient poor man's way of doing it, you know. Um, this is like a more optimized version where the storage system will tell you exactly which blocks got changed and you only send those without doing any check summing, without doing any comparisons between source and destination. So I don't think we have to be too prescriptive about what the right solution is, but we can say, you know, these are some of the options as far as how you can do change fault tracking. Yeah, I think that's the, the valid idea that like I, like I mentioned in the, uh, the segment of the white paper that it is an example of how it can be used. It doesn't say that it's the only way. So we can enhance that document with this kind of workflow as well, right? And I see that a lot of these um, basic, uh, the workflow that you are showing on the screen right now, it's also yeah. you know, kind of similar to the other workflow that I presented earlier. That means basically the snapshot and then we the, 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 the difference between the two and only back up the difference right? and so on and so forth. So uh, that is a, uh, a good enhancement for that paper, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, oh, okay, so Fang, uh, can you take this feedback and update? Yeah. Your talk? So uh, I, I think I would, uh, could you guys do me a favor and, and, and send a, uh, write, either write the feedback directly on the share document? I will do that. Yeah, or send me an email, either way it's good for me. Can you add a, um, can you add a link to uh, the, the, to the, 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 there. To the, the, the meeting box? Sure, yeah. I'll add it to the meeting links. Sure. Hey, Fong, I had a question on nomenclature here. And so you, you have a definition of differential versus incremental. Um, I, I'm, you know, we, we use a slightly different definition. I'm curious what the, what the kind of community thinks is the right definition here. So for us, when we say differential, we actually are talking about that full file comparison or doing the read of files and compar comparing the differences. Uh, an incremental is using something like a, a change block tracking API. Is is your definition here of differential, you know, based on your specific line of products, or is it something you've kind of pulled out of the community? Uh, I think the the <clears throat> I base on my research on uh, a couple of uh, vendors. One of them is uh, Azure. Uh, the other one is a VMware CBT. So this kind of uh, the concept that I pick up. Yeah. Now, uh, is I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure that is it like a common uh, terminology in all the backup vendor, but these two are what I base on. I see. So in, in Azure and, and VMware, they they make the same difference between differential and incremental where differential is you can compare any two snapshots and incremental is you can compare uh, two consecutive snapshots. That's what you're saying? Uh, if you look into, I can send a link for um, Azure for sure. I can I send uh, 
for Azure, and there's two um, the online document that uh, available that uh, spell out the differential snapshot and, uh, and and the incremental snapshot. I think at uh, S Street can also uh, helping on that uh, link. I think I got the link from him. Yeah, great. I guess I share with uh, Tom's comment over here. The uh, incremental snapshot thing seems to be a storage specific feature where they have a way of tracking, only keeping the differences between uh, a snapshot on a specific chain, right? Uh, it, whether we want or not it's related to change block tracking it seems not related. As long as the uh, storage window can return you a change block from any arbitrary snapshots from the same volume, it should be sufficient, right? So Sean, are you saying that basically we we frame this as just the, what the APIs are available, what APIs are available for CBT, and then say you can build you know, leave the differential versus incremental a little bit more general and say you can kind of build those those um, workflows with a CBT type API. Is that what you mean? Right. Right. I, I think the uh, individual uh, storage providers features with regarding to incremental snapshots seems to be not quite re relevant over here. I'm not sure whether we should be include or should include that thing. What do you think about this, Jing? I, I guess I, I remember I incorporated. Oh, I just, I, I, I basically, because uh, initially, uh, Fang only mentioned the differential, but we have been talking about incremental for quite some time. So uh, I just want to make sure that we actually have those definitions somewhere. So uh, that's why I don't know if you are actually reading the same. Um, so Shanqian, you're not sharing your screen, I'm not sure you're, you're, you're talking about why we are explaining those. I think the, I think we should have a definition somewhere. Otherwise, it's a, it will be confusing. Like because we sometimes talk about incremental, sometimes we talk about different show. We we should have a, a term described somewhere, even if it's not you know even if this is not the right place, we should have it somewhere before we talk about differential snapshots suddenly. Sure. Uh, the 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 pieces that I feel slightly not accurate is the uh, definition the last itself. Paragraph, uh -huh. The last paragraph. Right, we, we can say this is the features that, what is the incremental snapshot or what is the differential snapshots. Uh -huh. uh, the statement saying that differential snapshot should would be more desirable, it seems to be. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. okay. okay, we, we don't you want to do I mean? that. Okay, we'll be more, okay, then we just then, then remove that, I think, yeah. I, I just want when we have, have our terminology somewhere, but uh, I don't want to say which one is better. <laughs> Exactly right. Uh, so we, we okay. are proposing we are proposing a position here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. uh, it's okay to explain concept, uh, and we think this is the right approach of doing things. That's that's all we need to do, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I'm probably fine with that. Okay, so I just delete that line. I think he has already some. Uh, yeah. is it, who is? Oh, is it found? Okay, you are, you're modifying that. Okay. Yeah, see that get get deleted. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and you also command that we should uh, should not say it's a requirement. Maybe yeah. Um, this kind of feedback, maybe we just put it on the document itself. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, uh, we might run out of time otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks, Paul. Nice work. Uh, Shin, you want to go through the uh, diagram? Uh, the diagram actually, I didn't change it. So I think last time we just started to show that and then I asked uh, everyone to uh, provide feedback, but I don't think I see anything. We can show that again. Um, uh, well, if it's not different from last time, then I think people got the idea. Yeah, it's, it's the same. So basically, uh, I think Tom, you have some question last time. Uh, can you actually maybe add your comments on that, uh, in that doc or? I, I think 
I think uh, we're not sure like how you want to change it. Uh, I mean, we don't have to include this at all. I just thought uh, this actually showed all the things we want to talk about in the in, in the white paper. So that's why uh, I thought maybe we can show this diagram there. But you think if you think the diagram is actually uh, missing something, then we can either add it or we, we don't have to show that. Oh, um, no, I think okay. it's really good. Um, you know, my comment was just a little bit high level, which mm -hmm. it was that, um, you know, it's from if you just read the diagram, it's a bit unclear what components are actually things that, you know, Kubernetes will own versus things that are, you know, the underlying infrastructure versus uh, backup vendors. Oh, okay. And so I, I, I think Okay, I, I do, we, can, really we can add some explanation. Uh, like this is the, just the diagram, right? We can add some text because un underneath you show what, what, what that means. Uh, okay, we can, yeah, we can think about that because this diagram is already very busy. It is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we can add to say, this is a, uh, you know, what component is that? Uh, I think we, we mean to only show the Kubernetes, com I think the green, green, yellow, and orange, those are Kubernetes component. And then the, in the middle, those are processes. So um, yeah, I think I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, okay, maybe Shan Chen, maybe you know, I need to think about how to explain that more clearly. Maybe just through some text, or maybe we need to add some node next to the process somewhere to show it's actually in the back back of vendor has some software kind of coordinate everything. Like the orchestration piece, right? It's actually the, the back of vendor. Yeah, I, I, I'll okay. probably do a, do a Lucy chart rejoin of this this diagram. Maybe it makes life easier because okay. this, this thing is basically, uh, we draw this using slides components. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, uh, not, not a nice. It's hard to adjust the lines. It's hard to adjust the font, etc. So maybe I maybe I, I will spend some time to draw a Lucy chart of this. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. You said All right. You asked me to add feedback to this. Uh, how would you like to get the feedback? Um, oh, you can add. Why don't we just add it on this uh, this this doc this uh, slide? You, it's it's actually shared in the. If you look at the agenda doc, it's there. Okay, uh, yeah, just you can add comments there. It should, I think it's uh, yeah, you, you can, can add comments to the slides itself as well. Yeah, everyone can comment, I think, right now. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Thank All you. right, uh, we are 12 minutes away. Shin, uh, you want to talk about the GA thing? Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, so I'll just share this. Okay, so, well, we know that snapshot is already in 120. We added the V1. Um, and so we still support both volume snapshot V1, beta one and V1. And then currently the storage version is V1 beta one. So we serve both V1 and V1 beta one, but the storage version is V1 beta one. Um, but now what uh, we are making a change, we're changing the storage version to V1. Still, still serving both, um, and then so then after that we're going to cut a release, uh, cut a external snapshot or release, uh, and then the the last phase will be removing the support for even beta one. And I don't know how long we have to wait. I need to check. So, uh, so Shing, is, is this change aligned with Kubernetes one twenty one or one twenty two? One twenty one. So the the second one, phase two, phase two. Oh, okay, so so this is for the the release that just went out. We're gonna change yeah. the stored version to, to GA. Uh, change the storage version to V1, yeah, before we put in the release. And well, then- My understanding is that mm -hmm. as long as you have one release between each of those changes, so you you add GA support in 120, you change the storage version in 121, and you can remove the beta in 122. I think it's one release each. Yeah, that'll be-, that'll be Is it? Quicker. I thought it's I half a year, Ben. I, oh, I thought, okay. I heard something about like that, you know, a deprecation, you need like one year or like three or four releases. Uh, <laughs> so what, how, have we'll have we deprecated beta yet? Hmm? What? Have we, depre have we deprecated beta? Yeah, we're talking about, oh. we are talking about the removing beta. No, it's not deprecated. Right now we still oh, Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think that's we a separate support. thing is we have to announce that it's deprecated and that you should be using GA and then there's another clock on deprecation. So that's yeah, right. I don't know if we can, we can say deprecate one beta one when we, uh, 
change the storage version. Maybe we can. So I need to find that out. I, I don't know how how this thing works. Maybe maybe we should do that. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Otherwise, uh, last time yeah. I spoken with uh, I speak with uh, Jordan. Okay. Uh, his suggestion is keep a list for three release cycles for beta API. Uh, and if you want to follow, why do we have waited right? So we're in beta one. That was what was it one thousand seventeen. Yeah, beta. So now it's already one thousand twenty one. Four releases already. No, 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 no. Starting uh -huh. from one twenty. Okay. Three okay. releases, right? Three That's releases. basically where okay. we where we officially support we won, right? Uh huh. Okay. And then this phase two is a transition so... period. Okay, so it's probably one. Yeah, or, something. Or twenty four like something. Yeah. It's probably one dot twenty four. I'm guessing because it's three release. Probably three release after we declare deprecation because we didn't say when beta one is deprecated so probably we should say deprecated now i wonder oh uh, no. no uh no? It, it is in the api you cannot say it is deprecated oh we cannot say okay yeah so basically just remove it yeah uh, they, no actually uh, actually i do see deprecation notice for other apis yeah you have to deprecate it before you remove it yeah if you look at the like the what the cid extension the, the, those things you do see okay. deprecation notice yeah I, I misunderstood. So question mark. Uh, uh, okay, that's question yeah. mark. Let's find. I mean, I, 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 I misunderstood okay. you. So basically, okay. you said that the deprecation is sending out announcement. If that's the case, yes. Okay. I thought you were removing that in one point twenty one. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. No. Not. Not. We. Not, we can't. Yeah. Deprecation. We need to call deprecation of we one beta one in. But after we run out the clock on the deprecation, which might be like one twenty four, <laughs> then then we remove it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think I think likely one dot twenty-four. So it's, that's like a year. Right? They're, they're slowing down the yeah. release. And there's a good amount of work as well, too, right? Mm -hmm. For deprecation. What deprecation? Is, no, this is this one should be fine. I don't know if we need actually add some messages somewhere because yeah, uh, some other APIs have actually messages. If you use the like the beta API, you actually get something. If you check the logs, you see something. So I. No, I'm not sure. So that means there's a um, uh? yeah, there's a um, there's an enhancement that was put in for kubectl such that okay. like you can send back a header message that says this is deprecated, and then when you get that that version, it will it will oh. do that. And so like right. it's a um, I think in the CRD you can define this um and define the deprecation message for that version, but I don't remember exactly. That's where I would look, and then uh, and then for um. The other question I had was, do we have to do anything to support converting the storage versions uh, once we switch it over, such that like the the cube sig storage converter or some or one of those other tools will be able to convert storage versions, um, or will uh, that just work? Does anybody know? I think that's I think that's built in, uh, mm -hmm. at least uh, like when I'm testing this one. It, uh, it's built in. It's fine. It's it works. In. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you need a version conversion webhook if you make like any complicated changes. But if you didn't make any weird changes, uh, there's version no conversion is automatic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's yeah, no API changes actually. It's just a version it, change between. Right, it's, it's automatic except one fact. Uh, if your we want better once the R it's invalid, it might have your errors. Yeah, but the problem the thing I, is we don't even let that succeed. You you know you create a invalid volume snapshot. Uh, no, 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 like existing, mm -hmm. existing ones. But it's not possible because we added that in the controller a long time ago. They can never no. create a volume snapshot that is invalid and bound. Sure. If, yeah. if you have an invalid one before 120. Well, we're not supporting well, one, one, yeah, before 120, we, we added that logic a long time ago, actually. I think the in the controller, we have that quite some time ago. It's, it's before 120. But I think the concern is if you had a snapshot that you took a long time ago and you upgraded Kubernetes across like six versions and that old yeah, that broken part, snapshot yeah, was yeah. still there. I think we probably need to figure out what is that, like the... I didn't think something. upgrades like that were supported. <laughs> uh, <laughs> question <but> it, mark. <laughs> it, it was to call it out saying that, okay, for those invited ones which has been in the system so, for a long time, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Uh, you will have this issue, right? Basically, we have this document in the cap when we introduce the we, when we introduce in the uh, webhooks. Those invalid ones, basically, the, the 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 bigger problem for that ones uh, is that 
when it is converted and the pin into an we want, it will fail and it will remain we want better one in the system. Then when user try to delete it because of the webhook, it does uh, it is possible there are finalizers on that resource, then it go, the request gets sent to the webhook and webhook, webhook will deny the request. Say, oh, you're not allowed to remove the finalizer because the uh, resource is, in, in, uh, is an invalid one and that will make the resource not deletable. So yeah, yeah, yeah the, I think we need to check the, because we, I think we added a, a check long time ago. It's probably in 2.0, like in the controller, we don't even allow those type of snapshots to be bound. So, I mean, uh, I so, the, no, use no, no. It, so we need to check that. Yeah, you can update that, Shin. You can always update the resource directly against the API server. It doesn't necessarily need to go through your snapshot controller at all. Well, but then I'm just saying that they have to be using a very, very old uh, yeah. yeah, snapshot. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm just, that's what I'm saying, like when did they, when, so we need to find out when that logic was added and then any snapshot created before then, which is invalid, then not, there's a problem, right? That's so if right. they have That's like right. two, so if it has two source, basically, right? If it has two, both the, if it has both the, like the um, volume handle and the snapshot handle, if it has oh, both PVC. something, PVC. both the PVC and has mm -hmm. the content as source, right? So if, the, if that's the case, uh, then there's a problem deleting that because right. and, and we had some action required release notes telling people like when you upgraded to various versions like you're going to have to fix these problems and if somebody ignored all of those and yeah. they get all the way to the to 120 122 or whatever 121 we're talking about then, then they're it? yeah it's going to yeah, I think 121 should be okay because oh uh, even 121 no, sure. I'm saying like if you have if you've had a very a very old snapshot that was incorrect and you just haven't touched it in like a year and it's sitting there, when you upgrade to 121, you will no longer be able. To, I, in fact, when you upgrade to 120, I think you can't delete it anymore. You can't update it anymore. You had to fix that back in the prior mm -hmm. release. Uh, when you, we in 120, you can still update it, Ben, uh, okay. because the, uh, the yeah the the webhook will allow you to do that, uh, but in 121 you won't be able to do that. Okay, so, so, so that, that's point, the key is, right. is if, if, if people haven't fixed it by 121, then then they're going to be in a world of hurt. So, right. so Shanti, actually, I don't know how, I still don't know how that would happen. It went out 21, we just changed that. So we changed the storage version. That's the only thing we change. That's um, right, because because the API server needs to convert all we want better one into we want. Okay. And so the, why that, do we tighten the, the validating webhook to say no more? No more updates on invalid ones. Uh, we, we actually did a couple of things, Ben, right? One thing is that the controller will actively label those invalid ones. Yeah. In no, system. but I'm saying, w w when will we change it so that you can't update them anymore? When will we tighten up the, the validation? So After the convention has happened, it will be tightened because the webhook will get we want we want re uh, validation request instead of we want better one validation. Oh, request. okay. So you're saying that the mere act of switching the defaults of E1 means that you're going to get the new validation behavior. Exactly. Because yeah. it, okay. exactly. it converts it to your stored version before it sends mm -hmm. it to your conversion webhooks. Okay. Exactly, because the V1, uh, the validation on the V1, it's much tighter than the uh, validation on the V1 beta one. Okay, yeah. So, so hopefully people have been reading our release notes, and if if they haven't, they're going to be in a world of hurt. Yes, <laughs> but, uh, we, we but that's, all, that's all we can do. <laughs> yeah, that's we want to make it clear, and that's all. All right, uh, we are on time, I guess. Uh, any open issues? No? All right, thank you everyone. I'll stop recording.